And welcome to NTA Nationwide. My name is Kenan Emma Amorike. As the 2019 elections draw near, more pressure groups have continued to spring up in support and solidarity with President Muhammad Buhari. One of them is the parliamentary support group comprising progressive members of the House of Representatives. State House correspondent Adam Usambo reports on the formal interaction between members of the group and President Buhari. The parliamentary support group is formed by people of like mind to passionately articulate and push forward President Muhammad Buhari's vision on the floor of the House of Representatives and indeed the National Assembly. At the closed door meeting, also attended by the national chairman of the APC, Adam Soshomole, and the secretary to the government of the Federation, Bose Mustafa, the president engaged the parliamentarians on issues concerning the governing APC, state of the nation, projects and programs of government, as well as personal concerns and apprehension as the 2019 elections draw near. Leaders of the group who spoke to newsmen described the engagement with the president as fruitful. It is necessary to come and inform the president that we are committed to remain party members, rally behind the president so that we can take our party to victory in the 2019 general elections. He took time to explain to us a lot of things that uh, he is doing, his vision for the country. He clarified a lot of uh, issues. And as you can see, members are living very, very happy. And things will be fine. They urge President Muhammad Buhari to sustain his genuine efforts at making Nigeria better promising to work harder towards enhancing cordiality between the executive and the legislature. For the secretary to the government of the Federation, Boz Gida Mustafa, the interface was highly encouraging and desirable. Politics is a game of negotiation, it's a game of dialogue, it's a game of understanding. And it's for the betterment of our country. We are the party in government. The legislature is part of government. We'll be able to build synergy build consensus around issues and find resolutions to reach so that we can deliver on the dividends of democracy as we promised our people. And of course, His Excellency Mr. President addressed all their concerns, assuring them that party, matters of party will be properly addressed and none of them should have fear. This is part of confidence building and bridging the gap between executive and legislature. A similar engagement will be held with senators in the coming days. From the State House, Adam Sambu. NTA News. President Muhammad Buhari has approved the appointment of chief executive officers of three agencies under the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development. A statement from the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation names engineer Umar al Baraka Hassan as the Director General of the National Steel Raw Materials Exploration Agency, Kaduna, while engineer Linus Okonasukwo is the new DG of the National Metallurgical Development Center, JOWS. Also appointed is Professor Suleiman Bolaji Hassan as the Director General of the Nigeria Institute of Mining and Geosciences, JOWS. All the appointments take effect from July 12, 2018. The manufacturing sector in Nigeria is becoming much more promising with the newfound confidence among key players as a result of the Buhari administration's effort to break away from an import-dependent economy. Correspondent Usman Ali reports that with the renewed impetus by the government, industries are beginning to excel in their capacity and delivery. Exhibition is about the value of harnessing abundant resources in the country. It tells of the level of communication now in Nigeria, the readiness against dependency on foreign materials, especially in the construction industry. 
a continued quest for ideals by the Buhari administration for the country to realize its tremendous potentialities, the result of harnessing them for economic prosperity and better future. Industries like the West African ceramics in Ajakuta is beginning to change narrative in the area of exporting raw materials and importing finished goods. Now this company, with the production capacity of 30,000 square meters of tiles a day, is also harnessing precious stones, the marbles and granites, which before now were imported. Branding its product, Royal Ceramics, explains much of the quality and planned expansion for the varieties in the housing needs and more engagement of workers. First of its kind in Nigeria and West Africa, these products, marbles and granites, bring dual benefit in ownership, extraction and exploitation. It is international standard. Even better than some of these uh, tiles that you bring from Th uh, Taiwan and Thailand and China. This roofing, a heat and wind resistant, favorable to Nigeria's weather, is made by the Nigeria's West African Ceramics, a proof of its viability, it says, to support an affordable housing project by the federal government. In Abuja, Osman Aliu, NTA News. Stakeholders at the public hearing on a bill for an act to provide for the enforcement and punishment of crimes against humanity, war crime, genocide and other related offences are of the view that the quick passage of the bill will go a long way towards ending impunity in the country. This was at a one-day public hearing by House Committee on Treaties, Protocol and Agreements with stakeholders in Abuja. John Yaku reports that the committee also received memoranda for an act to give effect to the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants in the country. The two bills sponsored by representatives Nicholas Osai and Stephanus Dong are international treaties seeking domestication in Nigeria. However, the provision on domestication of treaties in Nigeria as enshrined in Section 12 of the 1999 Constitution, as amended, says, no treaty between the Federation and any country shall have the force of law except to the effect that such treaty has been enacted into law by the National Assembly. The public hearing is therefore to give the legislative backing to the above treaties before they are entered into. It's not meant to substitute the national mechanisms, but to complement them. The domestication of this bill would therefore give hope to victims and the Nigerian citizens to go to court. The perpetrators of this heinous crime, if arrested and tried, will actually provide a solution for lasting peace. The B for an act to give effect to the Stockholm Convention on persistent organic pollutant and other related matters also received inputs from stakeholders. The B seeks to protect human health and environment by banning the production and use of some of the toxic chemicals that are dangerous to the environment. Chairman of the committee appreciated the inputs from stakeholders with the promise to include their views in the final report. This is the public airing on it before we consider the reports and have concurrence with the Senate. From the National Assembly, John Yaku, NTA News. As the world progresses on a faster pace, more groups are advocating feminist open governance and inclusiveness in all levels of governance at the Global Summit on Open Governance in Tbilisi, Georgia. Minister of State, Budget and National Planning featured at the discussion panel. Franka Ozoma Olwa reports from Tbilisi. There has been a global struggle around the issues of women's rights, their reproductive health and participation in politics. In many societies, women's education and involvement in policy making have remained a big challenge. We need to start engaging men that are in positions that when they speak counts. For example, religious leaders, traditional leaders, they need to lobby them. For example, in UK, they've done a gender gap analysis and they found that the civil society sector is smaller, but there still is a gender gap. I'll pay up there. Um, so it's something that I think we need to see. But I don't think we're going to get there unless we actually develop quite granular commitments around these issues and we report them uh, and, 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 and acknowledge that in some cases that we're doing well, in other cases that we have work to do. Women empowerment 
lack of support from fellow women and women participating and men deciding are identified as some of the barriers to women's success. Whatever we do in government, whatever interventions we prepare, we have to look at it through the lens of asking the question, how will it improve the life of women? How will it improve the life of children? That is one good thing about UGB because it's talking about inclusion. And the inclusion is talking about people living with disability and of course women because we are the ones always been left behind. And to ensure that concerns and aspirations of women are effectively acknowledged. Speakers say there is need to change the social status of women, co-create and implement the things that matter to them. From Tbilisi, Georgia, Franka Uzoma Olua, NTA News. Sanity on Lagos roads on the front burner. Jennifer will give us details as we join her in Lagos for these and most stories. Good to see you, Jennifer. See you to Kenne. Welcome to Lagos. The Lagos State Government is finding solution to the perennial traffic congestion at the Osho de Apapa Expressway. A joint security committee headed by the Lagos State Police Command has launched what it called Operation Restore Sanity to Lagos Roads towards bringing about sanity on the road that leads to the nation's seaports. Doi Dia reports that about 2,000 officers and men from, the various, from various agencies of government will commence the exercise expected to begin midnight Friday. The gridlock which stretches from the Apapa ports through Maitu and Sele on the Osho the Apapa Expressway has melted on told hardship on residents and commuters. We don't have any access road to pass through here and it has been like this for months. This car has been in my office for two weeks. Every day I come to my office with leg and I go back with leg. I will make like 7,000, 8,000 before time, the time that road they clear. I know he make like 3,000. But me, I know happy because now people then they suffer. I felt that they should have decentralized all these things to other states. Let all these things never come to this place. Sometimes I get home past midnight. Because of the heavy traffic, I have to trek here to my two. The committee, which comprises of government security agencies, traffic managers, Nigeria Shippers Council, and other relevant stakeholders, were commissioned by the Lagos State Governor, Mr. Kim Yambodi, to map out strategies to decongest the area. With a resolve uh, to immediately start operation, restore sanity on Lagos roads. This operation, which starts, which kicks off Friday by midnight, 0, 0, 0, 0 hours, is intended to move trucks and containers from our bridges, from our roads and highways to designated locations. The committee says the deployment of special traffic equipment and proper enforcement will make the difference. With the renewed commitment by the Joint Security Task Force in Lagos State to embark on what it calls Operation Restore Sanity to Lagos Streets, it is expected that in no distant time the sufferings experienced on this road will be a thing of the past in Lagos doing dear NC News. And on security, a multi-agency solidarity security meeting to promote effective cooperation among security agencies in Lagos has been held by the 81 Division of the Nigerian Army, Lagos. The General Officer Commanding 81 Division, Major General Inobong Udo, says the collaboration with the Navy, Air Force and the police would ensure a more coordinated synergy towards effectively manning the zone. Dr. Oguyemi has details. Backing each other up rather than clashing is what the Nigerian army is championing to tackle issues of rivalry between security agencies as had been witnessed often. The platform provided officers of the various agencies and services the opportunity to interact and find a lasting solution to the issues that have been the bane of good and cordial inter-service relations. Major General Enobong Okun Udo urged the agencies to see one another as equal partners in securing the populace. Because we have shared and highly interrelated responsibilities, we can only succeed better if we share information and intelligence with each other, rather than 
try to undermine each other or looking at each other as encroaching in our areas of operation. Representatives of the various security agencies commended the GOC 81 Division for taking the initiative to encourage interagency cooperation. We have the Nigerian Army, the Nigerian Navy, the Nigerian Air Force, the Nigerian Police, and every other agency. We are all working towards achieving one goal. They are your fellow officers. We are striving against the same thing. We are trying to see that this place is peaceful. We are not fighting ourselves when we meet on the road. The meeting would be on a continuous basis in Lagos, Dotun, Ogunyemi, NTA News. And on health, to win the war against drug abuse and reduce cases of depression and suicide, religious and community leaders must be actively involved in enlightening the public. Mental health experts advocated this at a symposium on drug abuse and the attendant problems organized by the neuropsychiatric hospital, Yaba. Joy Ken Abakpoya has details. Sola Jumoke Koyejo is an addiction expert who, for several years, handled a minimal number of patients on a daily basis. She, however, says the workload is increasing due to the rising number of drug abuse victims who now throng the psychiatric hospital. The youths are the workforce in any society. And you can imagine now these youths getting cut off with substances. That means the workforce is being destroyed, the next generation is being destroyed. Her story is similar to that of other mental health experts in this hall. This symposium was therefore to find a solution to the menace of drug abuse. People need to be educated about the, these um, disorders. Speakers at the forum linked the increase in cases of depression and suicide to drug and substance abuse. They insist that religious leaders must, as a matter of urgency, begin to enlighten their communities on the many dangers of drug abuse. There's what we call alcohol withdrawal. In alcohol withdrawal, the person starts experiencing things like hearing strange voices, starts seeing strange things, and those voices he's hearing can actually tell him to jump into the lagoon. So the, all these things are interlinked. But the essence of this program is to get our people at the grassroots, the religious leaders, okay, the school children. These people are very close, very close to the people who are victims. The symposium had religious leaders, teachers and students in attendance. In Lagos, Joy Ken Abakuya, NTN News. Those are the stories from Lagos and this hour. Let's now link up with Kemi in Ibadan for stories trending there. Kemi, it's over to you. Thank you and welcome to Ibadan. Ocean State's Governor Raul Farag Bashala has thrown his weight behind the establishment of cattle ranches across the country to enhance livestock production. He gave his indication at a meeting with the World Bank delegation on livestock productivity and resilience in Oshobo. Larry Bilei reports. The federal government facilitated a $200 million financial support facility from the World Bank to develop animal husbandry across the 36 states of the federation. The six-year program was instituted in 12 pilot states who met the eligibility criteria and displayed interest in promoting livestock breeding. The governor, Rahuf Aregboshala, said Osho State would pay its 20 million Naira counterpart fund to make it easy for interested people in the state to key into the livestock initiative. Economic activities exist in animal husbandry, and whoever is interested in doing as a business will have the support of our state. Leader of the World Bank delegation, Professor Olukayodi Taiwo, said the federal government projected that development of local livestock production and its value chain will end Nigeria's dependence on the other countries for meat in no distant time. The mission is to encourage states and even encourage party, part, private participation in livestock and uh, ex, uh, ensure that the, the value chain in livestock is not lost. Osho State currently enjoys a comparative advantage in agriculture. The state's Rural Access and Mobility Program, RAMP, and the Fadama Tree Project were ranked amongst the best in Nigeria. Larry Bilei, NT News. 
As Nigeria marches towards being a greater nation, it is imperative for the media to be alive to their responsibilities in sustaining democracy and its values. The country director, United Nations Information Center, Ronald Kayanja, made the remark at a lecture on media and quest for peace, justice, and strong institution held in Abeokuta. Lukman Adefeso's report is here presented. The theme for the anniversary, the media and the quest for peace, justice and strong institutions in Nigeria was described as apt considering the forthcoming general elections. The guest lecturer, who is the country director of United Nations Information Center, Ronald Kanyaja, advocated more ethical reporting among journalists by dwelling more on in-depth and investigative reporting giving legitimacy to the voice of the marginalized. The media should never be indifferent on issues that could split the basic fabric of the society, of Nigeria as an entity. There is no excuse for fake news. There is no poison to laziness. The problem we have in this country is that journalists are not well paid. The media is a very vital tool in bridging the divide between the government and the government, as well as a veritable tool in information dissemination. Pen pushing platform uh, is what I call value addition to journalism. You know, they they are authentic. Okay, uh, even on the platform, they're very disciplined. Pen pushing online is has remained a source of authentic news globally. There was also a panel of discussion moderated by Professor Lai Osho. Many parents have suffered in silence and their children stigmatized for a disorder that costs little or nothing to be corrected. Cleft lip and cleft palate are congenital disorders that have caused many parents serious worries. Adebola Ogulano takes a look at the plight of victims of this medical disorder and effort to bring respite their way. Over now to Adebola. Cleft lip and palate are fascia and oral malformations that occur very early in pregnancy. What are the causes of this anomaly? For quite a number of them, we don't know why, but um, some women who take alcohol, who smoke while they are pregnant, particularly in the early first three months of pregnancy, or women who are on some drugs, they take a lot of herbs, they can actually come have children who have this deformity. In Nigeria, research revealed that more than 100,000 cases were recorded yearly. White medical experts say 270 have been treated in Ibadan. To create more awareness for the people, especially those that have such disorder, medical experts from University College Hospital Ibadan say the treatment of left lip is free. After the repair, it's almost as though nothing has happened. What they now, when they go back into the society, the feedback we get is they, they, they tell the mothers, ah, why do you allow this child to fall down? Be that as it may, children with cleft lips or palate are not disabled and should not be stigmatized or denied right to life. In Ibadan, Adebola Ogunano, NTA News. And that's it from Ibadan. It's over now to Kenya in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you, Kemi. If you're just joining us, this is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. More reports after this break. Hate speech is not a joke. It incites genocide and crimes against humanity. Most of Africa's civil wars are caused by hate speech from one tribe against another. We don't want it here. The Nigerian government stands firm against hate speech. Under no conditions whatsoever should we tolerate or excuse or justify hate speech or hateful conduct of any kind, especially where such is illegal. There's no doubt that the resurgent push for separatism as well as the rising cases of ethnic and religious disharmony are all traceable to the growing phenomenon of hate speech. One nation bound in freedom. Peace.
Nigeria, one nation, one people. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. When you think about hospitality and affordable luxury away from home, then you talk about Sharon Ultimate Hotels, a secured and serene environment that offers kingly services such as 24-hour room service, impeccable security with CCTV surveillance, parking lot, free Wi-Fi internet service, free complimentary breakfast, restaurants that offers continental and local dishes, well-equipped fitness center with instructors, swimming pool, 350 capacity multi-purpose hall, laundry service, pastry corner, mini mat, and our suites are breathtaking. For reservation, locate us at plot 1710, Tafawa Balewa Way, Area 3. Fake news which is shared for malicious purposes is a danger to our peace and security in Nigeria. Misinformation as fake news is a serious threat to our hard-earned democracy and promotes hatred and misunderstanding between our communities. We are all responsible for stopping the spread of fake news in its tracks. So, always check the source and credibility of any news item. Say no to fake news. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. It's game on at North Taste Quest 5. Get your kitchen weapons ready. Get your skills warmed up. Because in this game, the seasoned warrior wins. Get ready for North Taste Quest 5, the special anniversary season. Showing on DSTV Africa Magic Family and Go TV Africa Magic on Sundays at 7 p.m. and 6 p.m. on NTA. And AIT, North Taste Quest, Battle of Flavors. I'm going to do the contest. Oh, come on, G. That okay, was nice. I say, I beg, allow me to make my food just digest. Hey, 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 madam. Madam, I don't need that money. No more taboo for this place. No more taboo for this place. Welcome back to NTA Nationwide. The National Economic Council says partnership between the federal and state government has become imperative to address the devastating effect of flooding. The council at its meeting in Abuja also emphasized the need for prison decongestion. State House correspondent Jide Onifade put the available statistics of condemned prison inmates at 2,359 nationwide. Here is Jide's report. Minister of State for Environment, Ibrahim Jibril, made a presentation which informed the National Economic Council on the imminent onset of this year's flood season and the need for collaborative partnership between the federal and state governments for immediate intervention on flood prevention, mitigation and preparedness in the country. Anambra State Governor Willie Obiano briefed the press on the minister's presentation. In prayers, we are, uh, arrived at a short time and sustainable way to the silting major tributaries, canals, ahead of the flooding session. This is relatively inexpensive and excusable within a short, executable within a very short period of time. Uh, the council also agreed that there will be need to set up a federal project monitoring unit. Council also approved a project cost sharing ratio of federal government 30 percent, state government 30 percent, uh, presidential committee on flood uh, 40 percent on identified projects. Council was invited to note the cases of condemned convicts and the role of state governors as statutorily empowered to sign debt warrants 
or commit the death sentence to life imprisonment or exercise powers to grant prerogative of mercy in deserving cases. Honorable Attorney General proffered the following recommendations to council. One, that state governors may wish to carry out a review of the cases of condemned convicts with their, within their jurisdiction as enshrined in section 212 of the 1999 constitution. Two, that the Nigerian prison service to review its policy on interstate transfer of prisons to reduce incidences of prisoners being held outside their state of conviction. And three, cases of convicts in prison outside the state of conviction may be forwarded to the governor of the state where they were sentenced for considerations. The Honorable Minister for Finance also reported the following balances in the various accounts. One, SS crude accounts, one billion, sorry, one billion dollars, 918 million, 509,918.86. Stabilization fund account, 18 billion, 892 million, 864,216 naira 65 kobo. Council also noted the progress of the MSME clinics and welcomed the continuation and expansion of the scheme. The National Economic Council meeting was presided over by Vice President Yemi Oshindajo. In the State House, Jide Onifade, NT News. Meanwhile, erecting of structures on waterways and indiscriminate dumping of refuse have been identified as major causes of flooding in Nigeria. Guests on NTA's current affairs program, Good Morning Nigeria, noted that managing the environment should not be left to government alone. Serafina Okon has the details. Many Nigerian coastal and inland cities are already experiencing heavy rains, leaving residents homeless. However, predictions so far by the hydrological agencies say more rains are expected, hence canals and drainage systems must be kept clean. In order to mitigate the maintenance of flooding, guests on Good Morning Nigeria stress the need for building of more dams. The Director General National Emergency Management Agency, Mustafa Maihaja, advised people living along flat plain grounds to move to higher grounds. Where there is flood, people must move to the higher level. They must not wait to take items. But also we are expecting almost 318 local governments to be flooded, including what is happening today, what is happening in Jibia. We have taken a lot of uh, uh, measures by uh, sensitizing people. Professor Mohammed Al Hassan of the Department of Geography and Environmental Management, University of Abuja, emphasized that climate change has come to stay and therefore the need for establishment of weather pattern modeling towards reducing the resultant effect. We need to come up, you know, with what I refer to as planning. If you don't plan your urban areas, there are a lot of, you know, um, problems that will emerge. Like the case in Katsina, it has to do with planning. The area is not well planned. There are no drains. Where the drains are, you know, they are not, um, they are blocked. Now you are not considering the main rivers they are discharging this water to. If those rivers are silted up, they will not be able to take the waters coming from those tributaries. They will back up. All the guests insisted on adequate public information management, clearing of artificial and natural channels for free flow of water. Flooding, although, is a natural disaster, as humans can't control excessive amount of rainfalls. But research says about 55 to 60 percent causes of flooding are as a result of human activities. Serafina Okon, NT News. Now, in its resolve to end the persistent communal crisis between Cross River and Ebony states, the federal government says it will explore ways of curbing conflicts with a view of to promoting national unity across the country. Minister of Interior Abdurrahman Dambazo said this in Calabar during a courtesy visit to the government of Cross River State. Udwak Etim has the details. 
The communal conflict between Izi local government area of Eboin State and Ukele Axis in Yala local government area of Cross River State has brought untold hardship to the people of the affected communities with a negative impact on food security as majority of the people of the area are predominantly farmers. In a bid to foster peace, Minister of Interior was in Cross River State to get first-hand information on the crisis so as to prefer lasting solution to it. We would also like to encourage the establishment of joint committee of all stakeholders with representation from the National Boundary Commission with the mandate to look into all past technical reports in order to find lasting solutions. Acting Governor Cross River State, Professor Ivaresu, explained that the recent crisis struck after a peace talk held in Fuma in the local government area of Cross River State and called on the National Boundary Commission to expedite action for the demarcation of the boundary between the two states. I want to seize this opportunity also to appeal to the National Boundaries Commission that indeed there should be more visible action towards resolving this boundary between the two communities. The 14 years crisis will soon come to an end as the federal government says it is committed to ensuring that peace is restored in the affected communities in Calabar, Woodwork, Etham, NTN News. 2018 seasonal malaria chemo prevention campaign flagged off in Maiduguri. Jumei has this and other stories. Over to you, Jumei. And it's good to you and a warm welcome to me, Degree. But no state government has directed demolition of illegal structures constructed along waterways leading to flooding in some areas within Medjugri metropolis. Governor Kashim Shetima gave the directive when he visited some flooded areas during an assessment visit to road and drainage construction sites in Medjugri and Jiri local government areas. Mohamed Goni reports. Residents who interacted with the governor during the assessment visit said the area was not prone to flood until some individuals built structures on the waterways and a reservoir as they conducted him around the blocked water channels. Governor Shetima warned that government will not allow few individuals to create hardship to the society for their selfish aim and further directed construction of drainage to address the flooding, adding that demolition of affected structures should be done within the ambit of the law. You are free to embed the drainage of that school and let's the waterway for the water to flow. And this reservoir that actually belongs to the community but was illegally appropriated by some personnel of the Ministry of Land and fall up to be demolished immediately. The entourage also inspected ongoing 27-kilometer road and drainage construction site at Mairi Ward of Jerry Local Government, linking Mairi, Maimusari, and Mashamari Wards. Chairman Bornoste Road Maintenance Agency Satomi Ahmed briefed Governor Kashim Shetima on the progress made at various wards visited, where the governor expressed satisfaction with what he saw. Speaking to NTA News, Satomi Ahmed noted the challenges caused by the rainfall and requested for more time to enable them to complete the project. In Maiduguri, Mahamut Kuni, NTA News. World Health Organization, in conjunction with Bono State Government, has flagged off the 2018 seasonal malaria chemo prevention campaign at the Farm Center IDP's camp in Medjugri. Jadua John Jasani tells us more. Flagging of the campaign, the State Deputy Governor Osman Momondrupa commended the effort of the World Health Organization and other health partners for their untiring effort in seeing that the program of rollback malaria is successful in the state. The Deputy Governor gave the assurance that the state government will continue to partner WHO and other health service related partners on immunization exercise to eradicate diseases such as polio, measles, cerebrospinal meningitis and surveillance against noticeable diseases. He also said the present administration has rehabilitated and renovated damaged and destroyed health facilities and re-equipping them with the state-of-the-art equipment to ensure effective and efficient immunization activities in the state. State Commissioner, Ministry of Health, Dr. Haruna Michelia said with the support of WHO and other partners, Borno State Health Facilities is aiming to reach not less than 2.2 million children aged between 3 to 5 years with anti-malaria therapy in 23 local government areas to be administered on household basis. The Shehu of Bama, Alaji Umar Ibn 
Ibn Ibrahim El Kanemi in his goodwill message called on the parents to cooperate with the health workers and avail their children for the immunization exercise. The state coordinator, WHO, Dr. Aud Musa, elaborated on more areas of malaria prevention apart from vaccination, which include hygiene, sanitation, and use of mosquito nets, among others. In Medugri, Jadwa John Jesni, NTA News. Build up of political activities in Benue State. Charles has the details of this and more from McCurdy. Hello, Charles. Of the participation by some political parties in Benue. Looks like um, McCurdy Network Center has some challenges at the moment. We will take it over from here. Senate passes bill on IDP commission. Details of that and more reports when Nationwide returns from another break. Stay with us. You will not be burning your money again in paying paper bills. Thank you very much. Many people feel they have a responsibility to be irresponsible to those we feel have given them reason to show them irresponsibility. All they I want are give us the services. We will pay you after later. But the government has said, Pay us. We will give you services after later. When we check our duties to pay for services like light, do we make it possible for ourselves to be in the light or to dwell in darkness? How can they be asking for money when light is unstable? Code Meter is another mind-blowing and funny episode of your rib-cracking comedy, Professor John Bull, coming your way this week and laugh like never before. Now, nah. you come back here? No, come back over and out. Brought to you by Glow. The largest data network. Glow Unlimited. The Nigerian broadcast sector is evolving. Operators, including cameramen and photographers, require new skills and techniques to churn out world-class productions. A unique opportunity is open to all. NTA TV Collect Joss is organizing a four-week intensive short course in camera operation techniques aimed at enhancing the professional skills of cameramen and photographers practicing and freshers. Date 16th July to 10th August 2018. Another four-week intensive short course in photojournalism and photography holds 13th August to 7th September 2018. Then Venue for both courses is the TV College premises, NTA TV College, Rayfield, Joss. Fee, 100,000 Naira per participant, accommodation inclusive. For more inquiries, contact us on 0806-980-9807 and 0703-660-7155. TV College, Joss. Training you to be the best you want to be. Over the past three seasons, Airtel has touched the lives of countless families individuals and communities throughout Nigeria. This year, we continue the journey. Sometimes, if I go to school, I don't eat. The situation is pathetic. Things have just been too hard. We'll revisit some familiar faces and witness some truly remarkable transformations. And Airtel will once again touch the lives of more deserving Nigerians. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. Welcome back. We now return to Charles A. Makudi, your own Charles. Thank you for joining us again, Kenne. As political activities gear towards the 2019 general elections, there is a growing concern at the low level of the participation by some political parties in Benway State. Correspondent who has been monitoring the situation reports that many of the registrations are yet to set up offices in the state. Over time, political activities usually gather momentum as elections draw close. However, Analysts have opined that political parties are more interested in elections than the process of elections, which has adverse effects on the enlightenment of electorate. Some of the political actors say they may not be very visible for now, but they are working. We are confidently ready to go into the election proper. We have gotten a lot of people to contest elections and 
carry us along in the politics of the state. A lot of uh, ideologies have actually gone by and our set minds are on work. The Independent National Electoral Commission said out of 68 political parties in the country, only 31 have registered their presence, while only four of them have offices in the state. Some political analysts who urged political actors to play the game according to the rule explained that a free and fair election can be achieved on the platform of integrity and godliness. They are hopeful that, with the assurances by INEC, that all registered voters will collect their permanent voters' cards before the 2019 elections, more eligible voters will be able to exercise their franchise. Charles. Following the recent launch of a national campaign against fake news, more people have continued to lend their support to the crusade. The objective of the campaign is to curtail the damaging effects of falsehood in the reportage of events and developments. Godwin Alegu sampled opinions on fake news and its effects. The advent of social media in Nigeria has added a new dimension to information dissemination, raising concerns of the level of publication of false information. Equally worrisome is the practice of reporting falsehood or unverified developments by some media. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, at the launch of the campaign in Abuja, describes fake news as disturbing and an epidemic that is fueling various crises in Nigeria. State Director, National Orientation Agency, Anthony Aduku says, some publications on the social media are inciting and capable of creating tension amongst Nigerians. National Orientation Agency is going to play a very vital role to ensure that uh, this uh, message is taken to the people who should know. If you are a user of the social media, you will agree that a lot of things published there are fake and insightful. There should be a parameter of what is a fake news, but any professional trained journalist should be able to know what is an objective news reporting. In a multi-religious country like Nigeria, public analysts say fake news, if left unchecked, could be worse than some of the plagues that the world has recorded. In Makudi, Godwin, Inalegu, NTA News. That's the size of our report from Makudi. Kene, it's back to you. Thank you, Charles. President Muhammad Buhari has again made a case for intensive voter education to enable Nigerians not only take pride in their permanent voter cards, but use them consensually in determining the nation's leaders. This was while receiving national executive members of the Buhari Support Group Center on a solidarity visit. State House correspondent Adamusambo has the details. Established in 2014, the Buhari Support Group Center is an umbrella body of, among other pressure groups, Women for Buhari and Oshibanju, Akata Atsare, Northern Youth Assembly, and Buhari Renewal Mandate. The members are here to reaffirm their loyalty and support to President Muhammad Buhari in his aspirations to genuinely provide responsive and responsible leadership for public good. The president once again used the opportunity to explain that his decision to seek the renewal of his mandate early enough was to send a clear message to the rebel rousers. A lot of people are trying to make it a habit of being a nuisance to themselves and to too many Nigerians. <laughs> so when I come out and mention those who are serious, okay, let them come out. I'm very much aware of all that goes on uh, from constituency to constituency. And uh, I try uh, to make sure that the party uh, is very organized and consolidated so that uh, we start from bottom to top, so that Nigerians will feel involved. He spoke of the need for governors and other well-meaning Nigerians to ensure that people are well educated and enlightened on their civic responsibilities. And voter education is very important. Tell people, let them take pride in their PBCs and therefore let them keep it and use it across party, across religion, across ethnicity. 
this is an additional responsibility for you. President Buhari formally thanked the Buhari Support Group Center for their sustained cooperation, understanding, and solidarity as a matter of patriotism. I don't think I can thank you enough for the sacrifice and steadfastness you have shown by identifying yourself as a group consistently for all these years and getting nothing for it visibly, it means a lot. I am very sincerely grateful to you. Director General of the group, Alhaji Umar Dembu, who enumerated the giant strides recorded by the Buhari administration in critical sectors of the economy, said as essential ingredients of election, members are committed more than ever towards safeguarding the Change Nigeria project. May we assure you once again of our unflinching loyalty and dedication to duty as we start working towards your successful re-election in 2019. We are all prepared to work for a same safe and prosperous Nigeria. Alaji Umar Dembo used the forum to make public a critical compendium produced by the group on President Muhammad Buhari and the remarkable accomplishments of the governing APC in the last three years. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Senate passes the bill for an act to establish the National Commission of Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons. National Assembly Correspondent Ignatius Zonko reports that a new commission is to replace National Commission for Refugees. In 2004, the National Assembly enacted the National Commission for Refugees Act with a mandate to handle refugee matters. Fourteen years on, the Senate argues that the functions of the Commission is not comprehensive enough as its mandate does not cover internally displaced persons and therefore seeks to establish a new Commission that will fill the gap. Broadening the mandate of the Commission to accommodate internally displaced persons in Nigeria Mr. President, if you look at this bill, there really is no correlation between the instant act and the committee recommendations. When you want to amend, it's when you have to compare the existing law with the amendment. This is a complete, we are repealing, so it's like a new bill. This one issue of migration and internal displaced persons has the capacity to undo the world. I want to suggest that after the chairman to consist of six people, one at least from each geopolitical zone. Bills on the establishment of the Agency for National Ethics and Values and the National Commission for Peace, Reconciliation and Mediation were also passed. Of the bill will place more emphasis on prevention of unethical behaviors in Nigeria. In its resolve to provide a legal framework that will transform postal service in Nigeria, the Senate also passed the bill seeking to repeal the Nigeria Postal Service and reenact the Nigeria Postal Commission. It also passed the National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency Amendment Bill. To cover the provision of the postal service to unserved and undeserved rural communities and to prom and, and promotion of small and medium scale enterprise within the postal industry. This particular bill happens to fall within the economic bills um, that will move this country forward. Bill for an act to repeal the Nigeria Postal Services Act, Cap N 127 Elephant 2004, to provide for the operations and development of postal services, the establishment of the Nigerian Postal Commission, and for related matters, is where the third time had passed. Of a chairman, a President Muhammadu Buhari has written to the Senate requesting the confirmation of chairman and members of the governing board of the Federal Road Maintenance Agency. Senate President Bukola Saraki granted audience to the Secretary General of the African Parliamentary Union, Nzi Kofi, who came to seek cooperation of the National Assembly for the upcoming African Parliamentary Union Conference in Abuja. The Senate President assured him of Nigeria's commitment in the cause of ECOWAS and the rest of Africa from the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. Sports update is next. Nigeria 